Lesson six, practice problems. Number one, for each diagram, decide if y is an increase or decrease relative to x. Then determine the percent increase or decrease. All right, so for A, uh, we're looking at whether y is an increase or decrease. So if we look at x, look at the whole thing right there. Well, x is larger than y, right? The, the part that x is kind of showing there is that it's the whole thing and y is part of the thing. So I would assume that this is a decrease, okay? So it's a decrease. And uh, since it's broken up into four parts, I think what we can, we can safely assume that each one of those parts is 25%, you know? So that's, you know, 25%. Each one of these is a fourth, and a fourth translates into 25%. Okay, and so, um, so the percent uh, increase or decrease, it's a 25% decrease. And I'm not sure if it's asking us to set up an equation necessarily. But um, I don't think it can hurt us to write an equation. So if we kind of write this out in terms of, of y, uh, what can we say? We can say that x is, we could say what y is, yeah, we could just do this. y is, uh, you know, y is 75%, right? So I'm going to write 75 hundredths of x right? We can do that. Or, I mean, if we write it in fraction form, we can write y equals 3 fourths x. Just like that. Alright, for b, uh, we've got an increase going on there relative to x. Alright, and, um, you know, again, with x, everything is 25%. Uh, you know, so all these are 25%. And then you get this extra 25% there. And so this is a, I'll just go ahead and write this down. This is an, a 25% increase. That is a 25% increase. And, <coughs> pardon me, 25% <coughs> increase. And then if we write this out, uh, we can say that uh, y is what? We can say like 1.25x, like that, 125% of x. Or if we write using fractions, we could say it's y equals 5 fourths x. Number two, draw diagrams to represent the following situations. So the amount of flour that the bakery uses this month was a 30 or a 50 percent increase. 50 percent increase. So uh, we'll kind of do something similar to what we had before for the tape diagrams. That's terrible right there. How's about about that? Okay. So there's. Um, let me label this. And this part right here is going to represent last month. Okay? Last month. Now there's no numbers in there. Uh, we just know that that, is, that includes all the flour they used last month. So for all we know, it could be, you know, it could be 20 pounds of flour. I'm not sure if that's how you measure flour, but, you know, whatever amount. It's 25, 20 pounds. And uh, so now then it was increased. Uh, there was another 50% increase. Right there, I'm just going to try to make this look like about the same length as half of it. And so now this 
right here, just like we were doing above, right? That's going to represent this month. Right there, with that 50% extra added on there. Uh, part B, the amount of milk that a bakery used this month, this month was 75% decrease relative to last month. So I'm going to try to break this up into, into force. Okay, so there's right there. And uh, let's make that equal to, let's make that equal to, uh, what do you call it? Last month. Try to keep, I'll keep the same color scheme here. That's last month. And then uh, this month, the amount that it used was a 75% decrease. So 75% decrease is going to be right here. So you can see there, they use 25%, right? They use 25% of what they used last month. That doesn't say to make a, does it say make a, an equation? No, it doesn't. All right, moving on to the next part. Number three, write each percent increase or decrease as a percentage of the initial amount. Remember, initial means like the, the beginning amount, where it started. The first one is done for you. So for A, it says this year, there was a 40% more snow than last year. And uh, the amount of snow this year is 140% of the amount of snow last year. All right, so it's, so it's, um, it's tacking it on. You know, if it's an increase, if it's an increase, it's, you're adding on to 100%, all right? And if it's a decrease, you're gonna take away from 100%. And that's what you're gonna do. So for part B, this year there were 25% fewer sunny days than last year. So we're just gonna do 100 minus 25, which is C, compared to last month, there was a 50% increase in the number of houses sold this month. So you're going to add that on to 100. So we're going to do 100 plus 50, which is going to be 150%. D, the runner's time to complete the marathon was a 10% was a 10% less than the time. I don't know if that's written the right way. The runner's time to compete the marathon was 10% less than the time to complete the last marathon. All right, so the last marathon, again, we're always starting with 100%, and then we're going to take away 10%. And that's going to be 90. That's going to be 90 right there. And so that's it. So that's going to be 90% of the time that that runner had last year. Okay, moving on. Now I did a little setup on this one. I kind of drew some grid lines in here. Not that you need them, but for number four, we've got the graph shows the relationship between the diameter and the circumference of a circle with the point one on the x, pi on the y shown. So one on the x. Now notice to um, I mean, it says it in the description right here, but your, your x-axis is your diameter. Right there, you got your diameter, and then your circumference is your vertical axis, your y. Okay, but they're not really, we're not using x and y, we're using d and c. Di d for diameter, c for, for circumference. All right, and so just find three more points that are on the line. 
Well, I mean, we've got one pi, and we can do. We can do what? Uh, that seems kind of seems kind of weird, but like you could do uh, two pi right here, as long as it's on the line. Right there, two pi. And if you don't trust that, you know, like, what's that? Because pi is kind of an abstract concept. Think about it. Well, pi is like about 3.14. And if you multiply that by 2, you end up with 6 and 28 hundredths. 6 and 28 hundredths. So that, that kind of makes sense. Because, like, right here is halfway between there's 7. So halfway between 6 and 7 would be, you know, half of it. So, yeah, that's, that's about right. Those are really easy to figure out. That's right there. That's 2 pi, right? And really you can just find any number. So right here, here's where 3 pi would be. 3 comma pi, you know, which is, you know, a little bit over, you know, oh, it's almost 10, but it's between 9 and 10 right there. You can do, what else could we do? We could do 4 pi right there. So very easy to do that. Number five, Priya bought X grams of flour. Claire bought three eighths more than that. Select all the equations that represent the relationship between the amount of flour that Priya bought, which is X, and the amount of flour that Claire bought, and that's denoted by Y. All right, so if we do this uh, right here, so the the amount that that Clara bought, or Pre bought X, and Claire bought three eighths more than that. So that's right there. I, I didn't write that like an, I wrote that more like an expression, but you can kind of tell that C right off the bat is one of those options right there. And I believe there's one more there. There's one more, uh, and I would pick uh, E. Now that one's not so obvious. It's not so obvious, but uh, I think it goes to say, like you know, knowing the coefficient, you know, the coefficient that's in front of the x is a one, right? There's always a one there. There's a one there, but um, that probably doesn't make it make any sense either. But what we could imagine is, you know, one in fraction form is as long as you write a number over itself, it is equal to one. Right? 3 over 3, 2 over 2, 4 over 4. Okay? Now, in this case, we have 8. So, you can also imagine that x, um, not x, but 1 is equivalent to 8 eighths. 8 eighths. So, there's where that 11 eighths comes from because 8, right? 8 plus 3 is 11. So, you got 11 eighths right there.